So, hi everyone, we're back again. This is Hayley Dyer and I've got Pete Brown with me again. Hi, Peter. Hi, everyone. Oh, it's great. Good. So, what we're going to do today, we're going to, same format as last week. If you could, if for anyone watching, we want you to engage with us. So, put your questions and put QU emoji in front just so we know it's a question. And um, we'll do our best to answer them for you. And also, so, straight away, put put in the comments that you would like to connect. Say, let's connect or open to connection and let's get everybody connected with everybody. That's the whole point of this is to grow. So let's do it straight away. Yeah. Kaboom. Okay, so why don't we give a couple of tips ourselves and while we're waiting for everybody to think of a couple of questions. Do you want to go first, Hayley? Yeah, sure. Good. Um, so... <laughs> If you're looking to grow your network, you want to be focused on your end goal. So it just keeps moving. Um, your end goal. So whether it's a job or let's focus on the job because that's really a bit easier. You want to be targeting companies um, that you want to be working for and target also the people who work for those companies as well. So engage with them, engage with their posts, send them a LinkedIn uh, notification, LinkedIn request with a message i do i think i could keep going all day with these ones so um and just try and grow organically that way Lost great tip great tip <laughs> so i'll start with you know going back to the you know i said it i'm going to say it every week and that is you know we're all terrified to start with we're all ter terrified to like too much we're all terrified to comment and then dare you ever go and start posting. Oh my goodness, that is, it, you know, and I'm not exaggerating. It, it, it's terrifying when you start doing it because you don't, you don't get a lot of, uh, you don't get a lot of comments. You don't get a lot of likes. You don't get a lot of love. And you're probably expecting a bit of abuse, which really you don't get. The, the worst you get is silence, which is quite upsetting in itself. I think that is the worst one, isn't it? Because you're sat there, yeah. you've, you've, uh, thought about what to post and the content, the wording, the grammar, et cetera, et cetera, and then no one likes or comments. <laughs> Tumbleweed. Tumbleweed. And, and you know, that's just, oh, I, I was, um, so in terms of content, I, I've been thinking about this and, and I've changed the way I do my content. I have a, a, a thing which is basically, um, it mixes what I'm good at, which is my leadership skills, but what I'm passionate about, which is motivation, and it's the it's the cross section of those two things. But what I've started doing recently is I've started thinking of a subject matter, and recently it's been uh, uh, servant leadership, and I've I've basically got that subject and then looked at it from several different angles to make different posts about the same thing from a different angle. Yeah. So about you know the skills of a servant leader, you know that what are the skills? So I'm going to go through the characteristics, which are you know, listening and, you know, empowerment and all those things. And I'm going to do a different post on each of those. Yeah. So you kind of brainstorm it. Um, so that's a, a great tip, I would say. Sit I've, and brainstorm. I've also heard people kind of writing an article and then literally just taking chunks out of it. So it spreads them. Um, so we've got some questions coming in. Um, Mohammed, what's this about? So this is about growing on LinkedIn. Hi, Mohammed. Hi, Mohammed. Um, so we're going to give you tips and tricks uh, of how to do so and also how to engage, what to talk about. So post your questions if you have any questions as we go through. So thanks, Mohammed. Um, OK. Oh, <laughs> that she said, who am I? <laughs> oh, I can't answer that one for you, Mohammed. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK. So we're already connected. Does so anyone have any questions? Go on. I, I, so one of the tips I would suggest to you is there are there are limits on the amount you can connect, but yeah. there aren't any limits on the amount you can like and comment. So, you know, you can go you can look all over LinkedIn and you can search for hashtags that you like and different groups that you think are interesting and just get stuck in. Get, you know, like the stuff you like. Don't don't be sparing with your likes. Don't be sparing with your comments. And make your comments sort of meaningful. So think really carefully about what people are saying and make yeah. a really well-judged, thoughtful comment. And you'll start getting likes and comments on your comments. 
Yeah. And uh, you you said something off camera earlier on, which I thought was really good about your timer. Would you like to share that with everyone? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, one of my pet things is time, right? I, I bought this timer. And what it signifies to me are the hours and minutes of my life ebbing away. And I don't mean that to sound negative. I mean it to sound like empowering because you've just got to seize the day because we're not all going to be, none of us are going to be here forever. As Haley said, you know, it, it's it's absolutely for sure that, we, you know, it, it ends in one thing. <laughs> it, yeah. So you might as well get on with it. Go for it. That's the that's the truth. So we've got a great question here. Let's just come in. Um, oh, <laughs> pick the wrong one. So somebody else message at the hi, same Tato, time. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, hi Tato, me from last week. Um, so this is a LinkedIn user. Not sure who it is. Um, but how do you get over the no response to your posts phase? Is it a phase? How do you know? <laughs> well, it's definitely a phase. Um, Pete and I can both. Um, it, it, it's hard work when no one's responding, but start engaging with people. You need to start chatting with people anyway. So find find your cheerleaders or find people that are posting content that inspires you in some kind of way um, and start posting on theirs. They'll start posting on yours and it just kind of snowballs from there. Yeah, what I do is uh, when people when people comment and like regularly on my posts, eventually I start knowing who they are and I will start going to their profile and I will look at their posts and I will actively try and comment and like their stuff. And th this is the concept of reciprocation. You know, it's like anything in life. You know, if you want somebody to do something for you, do something for them. Don't expect them to do it for you, but they probably will. You know, well, what you give comes back. Yeah. And you brought up a good point there because, um, for on the recruitment side, I do get a lot of messages saying, get me a job, and that's it. Yeah. It doesn't inspire you to do want to do anything because it's like, well, yeah, there's thousands of people that want a yeah. job. Same it's, rules apply. Sorry? Same rules apply. You know, in, in real life, you know, you've got to be polite. You should, you should be respectful. And, you know, I think people sometimes, because they're sat behind a keyboard and you can't actually see them, they think they can behave in a different way and that's not true we should have the same courtesy and we should give, give people the respect that uh, we would give them if we were face to face yeah and also i don't see um you know there's i get a lot of messages that's dear sir and all of this kind of stuff it's, dear madam you know i quite like it when somebody is more human yeah as well. you get to know them if it's if it is just kind of one of these messages that's dear sir or whatever I am this, I am that, can you help me? It's, yeah. it's cold. Um, I want to know about the person. I agree. There's a question there uh, from Jennifer. Jennifer Penn. Hi, Jennifer. Ah. And it says, Hi, Jennifer. Is there a specific day and time of the week that is best to post? <laughs> it's a great question. So so I, 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 what I've done, I post twice a day, every single day. And I started by posting at 7.30 in the morning and 4.30 in the, in the afternoon, UK time. And more recently, I've changed my second post to 12.30 or one o'clock midday, basically. So I'll post straight after this, this uh, event. And the reason being that if, you, if you're in the UK and you post um, at that time in the middle of the day, you get the American audience which is just about in the day and you get the Indian audience is just about in the day. And it depends also on who is your audience. So my audience is UK, American, Indian, Australian, and you should therefore try and cater for the times that they're around. Yeah. So it depends where you are. Um, I think is the truth and you should test it. You should test when, when, I mean, I keep posting at different times. Sometimes I post two posts in one go to see what happens. <laughs> and what happens? <laughs> well, a lot of people said it would take away, but you know, I, I, a couple of times I did it, I just got double the engagement, two posts, double the engagement. So I think that also people do worry about that. Oh, if one post doesn't do so well, should I post again? And the answer is yes. I think Peter's tried this before, haven't you? Yeah. It's just got to keep going. And I think, you know, it, if you, it's not so much the date, the time of day that you post, it's just that you get consistent. So it, and you know, it, it pulls into that question, you know, when do we get the, over the no response? Well, 
the way you'll get over it is by repeating the exercise and keep keep posting and don't worry about what what uh, response you're getting and it'll just grow yeah and it's a good point to point out point out um that pete has grown his followers from 2000 to now 24000 in just over 3 months so if you engage and post regularly it will happen for you it will and you know if you're if you're not getting great engagement then really go to town on the people who do engage so if somebody likes your post go and see their profile go and look at what they're doing and just make sure that you're cementing that person that hopefully they'll come back again and and do you the courtesy of liking and commenting on your post great question jennifer thank you very much for that so we've got another yeah. one here from a linkedin user i'm not sure who this is hi guys best way to cold connect without coming off as salesy <laughs> well i don't like cold connecting and and i certainly don't like people trying to connect with me without a, a note and you know there's got to be there are rules on linkedin as well by the way so you shouldn't you know arbitrarily start sending connection because you could get in trouble for that but what yeah. you can do is if if somebody what i do is if somebody either likes or comments on one of my posts or one of my comments I will literally go through all of the likes and any of that I'm not connected to, I'll send them a nice little note saying, thanks so much for liking my comment, please connect. And the response rate to that is 85%, I would say. Um, actually, after our LinkedIn Live last week, I had a uh, somebody try to connect and I said, oh, sorry, you know, I'm kind of near my 30,000 limit. And I also saved mine for mainly what my recruiters need. And um, he responded saying, yeah, I, I only wanted your network. I was like, charming. Yeah, charming. <laughs> How to win friends and influence piece, people, eh? I know. <laughs> oh dear. Um, so we keep moving on. I'm, so hi, Abdul. Um, hi, Abdul question i'm a professional a senior level professional and getting huge response prior to covid19 but since then nothing well <laughs> i think everyone's suffering in 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 uh, this situation abdul uh, i i left my job in september october and i i basically gave up applying for jobs and just went all in on linkedin since then i've got I did secure a job. I've decided maybe that's not the, the, the thing for me right now. But um, I would suggest to you that if LinkedIn is a great way of upping that response, uh, mm -hmm. it depends on you know what you're doing to get the to el elicit the response. And obviously, there's a bigger conversation there. But I would just say stick to it. Things have gone through a bit of a lull with COVID, but you know, fingers crossed, we are. We've seen the worst of it now, he says, hopefully. Yeah. And uh, maybe it will improve soon. I mean, also, everyone was on LinkedIn last year, weren't they? <laughs> I think it probably has dropped off a little bit because there were so many people looking for work. And, and yes, there are still a lot of people looking for work, but I don't think um, everyone's on it as much as, as they would have been last year. Um, but I, I would <laughs> listen to Peter. I'd test different types of posts. Maybe you're just not hitting that note with your audience at the moment. Just keep experimenting. Garidaran has got a, a question yeah. there. How so, to leaders in our industry? So yeah. I would suggest to you, whatever the industry is, the, the first thing to do is not be clumsy about, if you're, if you're going for a high level leader in an industry, what you should do is find them on LinkedIn and try and um, engage with their with their posts and like and comment their posts and in, try and engage that way. And then when you, if you do that for several weeks, what I do is I put a bookmark on my internet browser of their of a link straight to their post page. And then so every day or every week, I'll look at depending on how often they post. I'll go to their posts and I'll like and comment and engage. And eventually that industry leader will see you as somebody who's very familiar. And at that point, you send them a note saying, I've loved your content. Thank you very much. Uh, it'd be really great to connect. And it's warm then rather yeah. than it being cold. Yeah. Actually, that's probably a good response to the 
a question earlier on as well. It, you know, you want it to warm these people up first. So just sending a message out of the blue, <laughs> why would they want to connect? So post content that is uh, relative to that individual as well. So if they are going to go onto your profile and have a look at your posts, that you're posting stuff that is, yeah, in relation to what they do, they're more likely to connect. And it's another from a LinkedIn user there. Can you suggest uh, simple ways to boost your LinkedIn engagement? I mean, the key here is it's not it. It is simple, but people don't really often don't want to hear the 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 reality, which is it just takes a bit of effort and consistency. Yeah. So it doesn't happen by accident. You know, you've got to come to the to the pitch. You know, which is LinkedIn. And, you know, play the game every day. And yeah. if you do that and engage, then people will engage with you. It, it is that reciprocation um, phenomenon. Yeah, and it, it is, and it is that, that simple. You know, if you're asking someone to do, do it for you, they're less likely to do that. But if you're putting yourself out there first, you've got to want it. <clears throat> so, for instance, whatever LinkedIn user, whatever your skill is, you probably can offer some kind of informative information to, to LinkedIn. And, you know, there will be people who want to read it. So, you know, I love, I love talking about management. I love talking about leadership and motivation. And I like it when people respond to my posts and say, you know, that positively influenced me. Yeah. I, that makes me feel fantastic. I, you know, to have an, a positive impact on anybody's life is a, is a fantastic thing, I believe. Yeah. So that's what gets me going. So give, you know, what are you trying to give? Don't try and take, try and give, and it will come back to you. It's a karma thing, I think. <laughs> yeah. So we've got another LinkedIn user. What if those industry leaders are not actively posting on LinkedIn when they're not on LinkedIn? <laughs> it's, it's, that's actually very difficult. However, what I do is you can find people who are associated with them. And you might be able to sort of, there's a thing in sales called the complex buying team. And the person you want to necessarily engage with might have a group of people who surround them who might influence their decisions. So find the people who influence them and go and see if they're posting. So it's not easy. It's a good, it's a really good point. It's not easy if they're not engaging and, and posting. But what you can do is try and look at their connections Look at people who work with them, maybe in the same management team or whatever, and engage with their posts and see if that can sort of get you to where you want to go more subtly. Yeah. Um, so we've got a lot of LinkedIn users here. I don't know your names, so sorry about this. Um, thoughts on best performing LinkedIn posts, audio, video, pictures, text. So this changes all the time, doesn't it, Pete? Yeah, I've, I've got a great example, though. Like uh, yesterday, I posted a flip book. I don't know if everybody knows what a flip book is. It's a multiple page presentation on, on, on LinkedIn. And it, it flip books, are, they're actually um, very well thought of by LinkedIn. And each time somebody looks at a different page, I believe it's a different view. So my yeah. post yesterday got 30,000 views. Uh, in, it got 20,000 in two hours. And, and that was like pretty high performing. So I think flip books are quite a good one. But, yeah. um, you know, audio. So video ones are interesting because I do two two videos a week but and they uh, they get a, a much lower level of interaction because p people have to watch the video for three seconds. Whereas mm -hmm. if it's a text post, they literally have to hold the screen for three seconds and it will count as a view. So you, you're much more likely to get higher levels of views on a text post, but the, probably the reality is the engagement in reality for what, depending on what you want to achieve on videos is much higher. Yeah, and also people want to get to know who you are as an individual, and the best way to do that is through video. Yeah, and and try, you know, I, I love experimenting. You know, I do I do pictures, I do videos, I do I, I haven't done audio as such. Oh, I but know. I do text, you know, and all of them depending oh. how the effort you put into it, the effort you put into it and the thought you put behind it is completely proportionate to the output. 
you know, like if you if you do a throwaway post, I've done those, and, and I literally the the audience speaks and says, "We don't like that. We want you to think about it." <laughs> you can tell. Yeah, although also some of those things that it depends on the time of day that you're posting as well. If you're going to late at night, don't expect a lot of engagement or a lot of likes, etc. It's pretty pointless, really. Um, you're right. Okay, so we've got a few other questions coming in now. Um, by the way, everyone, if you want to grow your network, can you put Let's Connect so other um, viewers watching this can connect with you and yeah. grow your network? Because that's what do it now, is. everybody. Just write in the comments, Let's Connect, and and even. As we're live, they'll do it, but also the recording will last for ages and people will yeah. come to the recording and they'll be able to see that you've said, let's connect and they will connect with you. So it'll, it'll be long lasting. So we're talking about growth, let's connect. Put Actually, it in the I, comments now. I looked um, at the stats this morning and as I was watching our video from last week, well, not actually watching, I was just looking at the stats, at seven mm. people viewing. So there's always people viewing these things, which is great. Yeah. Greg's got a question there. How long do you think it's too long for a video? <laughs> well, I've got Greg. Great to see you. Uh, I great, great picture there, by the way, Greg. I like that. Um, I I have got great experience on this because I've posted probably a hundred videos in the last few months, and um, what I found is one minute is your kind of optimum, and it doesn't sound like a long time, but you 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 know, that's where it's about at. If you start going two minutes, three minutes, forget it. That, you know, the engagement, it depends how serious the, the video is. If you're looking for number of people, I reckon one minute, one, one minute, one minute, 10, not yeah. no more. Yeah, unless it's a live, which is slightly different. <laughs> slightly different. Yeah, so, great question though, Greg. Any more questions? Thank you everybody for putting let, Let's Connect. Hi, Nick. Hi, Candy. William, so we've Let's got a question. Yeah, um, is there any requirement for activate LinkedIn Premium? Um, someone looking at my profile but can't see. Uh, so for the LinkedIn Premium is a paid um, service by LinkedIn. So you'd have to pay for that. Um, but someone looking at my profile and can't see. So yes, there are, so LinkedIn works as in you have to connect with people to see more people, etc. So there will come a point where people can't see your network because then they're not a, um, a LinkedIn connection of anyone close to you. So it's either a first connection, so a direct connection, a second connection, you've got someone in common or a third. And then outside of that, they can't see you. And if you block, if you if you block people seeing that you've looked at their profile, that necessitates LinkedIn saying you're not allowed to see who's looked at your profile. So I used to do that, and then I gave up on it, thinking I don't care if somebody sees me looking at their profile. What's it's fine. Yeah, it's kind of the, the whole point of it, isn't it? Really. <laughs> yeah, but I, there's another thing, like looking at if people look at your profile, analysis of that, and looking at who has viewed your profile is really important. So, yeah. you know, I have, I think, I think 20,000 people looking at my profile, which is a lot of people, but you can narrow it down and basically go through it and look for the sort of the, the people you really, really want to connect in. You can even send them a message saying, you know, I noticed you're a second connection and you looked at my profile. It would be great to connect. And that's a legitimate, you know, direct message and a connection request especially if there's somebody who could benefit you. I also think, so if, if there are people out there who are searching for a job at the moment and you're seeing people view your profile but not message, I take that as a sign that it's not a warm profile, etc. So I would start looking at changing your profile um, and making it more inviting. I mean, as part of the academy, we talk about your LinkedIn as your shop window. Uh, as like I like to think of it so you know you want people to come in to your shop and ask questions and if they're not then they're not intrigued enough so you need to start posting and create all this content so people get to learn about you and it makes it easier for people to reach out to you as well because they feel like they know you <laughs> very good point Haley. and I think it what would be good there's a thing called 360 degree feedback so you know look if you're really serious about this 
get your profile to the position you want it, then ask somebody who's close to you about it and ask them what they think of it. Ask somebody who's not so close to you about it and ask somebody who you actually don't really like, but you respect <laughs> them because they're probably going to give you the tough truth that you, you might not want to hear, but that's what feedback's about. You know, yeah. you, sometimes you need to hear the tough stuff to, to, to improve, you know. Mm, definitely. So, um, I, in natural fact, I had somebody contact me yesterday saying that he was suitable for a role that I'm advertising. And if I looked at his profile, it's so far from it, so far from the job description um, that he, I don't, I couldn't see how he could be suitable, if that makes sense. So yeah. you need to analyze your profile and establish if you're, you're sending the right message. Absolutely. So we'll, we can maybe go to that question on LinkedIn user, but I've got another tip. And the tip is when you are um, going to engage with somebody else's post, when you look at the comments, go back with a comment and ask a question. Yeah. So when you, when you comment and ask a question that's relevant to the post, then the chances are they will then come back and ask another question or answer the question. And that is the very nature of growing engagement. Ah, so, sorry, <laughs> I think I missed your question and found another one. Um, so, thanks, Alan George from Dubai. Um, so, <laughs> from a B2B perspective, thoughts on targeted marketing on LinkedIn, does it have to have better value as compared hand-to-hand -hand connections? Well, I don't know. Um, are we talking about paid marketing on LinkedIn? Because I know it exists, but I'm not familiar with it, to be honest. No, it's not something that I've, I've actually done. Um, we're, we're, we're more on the organic side. I do believe that, you know, you can really, really closely and finally uh, target people with LinkedIn paid ad advertisements. And I, and I think if you've got the money and it's it's important enough to you, then yes, I would do that. But we're talking more about, you know, us growing by consistent organic approach. Yeah. And also I think it's um, a good point. I, HubSpot did a, um, a survey in March this year and LinkedIn was 277% more effective than Facebook um, and Instagram. I know that's slightly different if bringing in Instagram, but for, for business leads, et cetera, um, it was a winner. Like yeah, that's great. So, um, what else? So, have you got any tips? Have I got any I've, tips? I've got one. <laughs> so, one I would also, we've got this piece of software that we teach our academy users to use. It's called Snapper. Actually, I'll put it into the comments box. Um, so if you've got, a, there's, there are some people on LinkedIn who don't have a, so I'm trying to type and talk at the same time, it's not really working. So if you um, want to analyze your, your profile picture and see what other people see, so you can put it into this piece of software called Snapper and it will give you, a, it will grade your, your LinkedIn profile picture, which is quite brutal, I have to say. <laughs> you can't really change your face, but... No. Um, you know, most users want to see someone who is personable. Um, if you don't have a smile on your face, you're less likely to get, um, you know, any engagement. But you are 20 times more likely to get a message if you have a profile picture. So for those of you out there who don't have a profile picture, get on Snapper, put a, <clears throat> put a picture in there and get it on LinkedIn. Great tip. Another piece of software which I use is called Shield. Uh, and it's yes. um, it's a, a, a software that analyzes, it links, it, it connects to LinkedIn and analyzes, you know, all of your posts and, you know, how many likes, your followers, you know, engagement, and it compares it month to month, week to week, year to year, which is very powerful. And I found, I found that incredibly good for the analytics of what you know how I'm progressing in terms of my engagement and followers and connections I was just trying to find the link to it then is it shield.com I think it goes on something else Ooh, um, let me tell you I'll, I'll find it and um, we'll post it later okay. 
Um, so you all, yeah, analyze your photo, analyze your LinkedIn profile. Also, what I would do, there are some people who get quite passionate on LinkedIn <laughs> and probably too passionate. So I would always advise people to go through your old posts and do read through your comments and make sure that they're showing you. Oh, there we go. Thanks, Mahmood. <laughs> it's found at shieldapi.ai. Thank you so much for that. Thanks. Um, so I would go and reevaluate the posts that, and comments that you put, either edit them or delete them if they're not appropriate. Because as a uh, an employer or, or recruiter, it's something that I do. I'll go and have a look at people's comments to establish what kind of person they are, their character, etc. And if there's a lot of negative comments on there, um, I tend to skip past them. <laughs> it's it's not a good mm -hmm. look. I would go. I would go back and reevaluate your the posts that you put on LinkedIn as well, just to make sure that they're showing you off in, in the best light. Very good point, Nizar. We will try and speak a little slower. Apologies if we're going too fast. <laughs> one of my one tip I would suggest is um, if yeah. you if you aren't uh, posting or but you want to get involved. Start by finding somebody who you like. Search on LinkedIn for somebody who is, is sharing ideas and posts that you think are interesting. And literally find a, 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 a post and go through every comment and read them and like the comments that you like. So go through like and the ones that are really good because there's some amazing comments being made. Comment on their comments and say, you know, I like your comment because of this. What do you think about this? Yeah. And you engage in a conversation there. And what you'll find is if, let's say, I, I like Gary Varnachuk, who's a big influencer on, on yeah. LinkedIn. And he's very motivational and I really like that. And I go through his posts. And some of the comments and some of the information is so fantastic. I will go through and, and like and comment on the comments. Yeah. And for instance, uh, I think um, I one of my... One of Gary Varnachuk's, somebody else commented on his uh, on his post, and she got three hundred likes on her Whoa. comment. Um, so it's almost better than doing your own post. <laughs> Don't have to worry about what you're going to post. But I, didn't you say last week that you got over six hundred new followers in one day? Yeah, that was. Um, <laughs> Yeah, on one of my one of my posts that did really well, I think it was up to two hundred thousand likes that day. I got six hundred and twenty follower new followers that day. So the the engagement creates the the followers, doesn't it? And yeah. the more activity you make, the more acti the more you put yourself out there, as you as you put it, Haley. The more yeah. people engage. You know, we're all human. You know, we're me, Haley, and I are on here today. We're both nervous. We're not. We're not. You know, inhuman people. We're, we're just like everybody else. And you know, and it's it's of a. We're basically all on the same trajectory, which is to try and grow on LinkedIn. It's just some people are just a bit further ahead than others. Yeah. Yeah. So we Haley's. Sorry. We really had to g each other up to do these LinkedIn lives, didn't we? Because it is a bit daunting. You're. You're out there for everyone to see, and you could mess up at any minute. But if you're just putting a post out there, it's just a post, <laughs> so do it. Exactly, and and a... nobody will be hurt in the in the enacting of a post. <laughs> you know, no one is. You know, nobody is. You will not be hurt. Maybe your feelings will be hurt, probably because people won't like and and comment as much as you'd like. But apart from that. You know, you just dust yourself down and do it again, and it grows like a, a lovely garden being tended. Okay, so we've got um, a message here from a LinkedIn user. I don't know why I can't see users' names today. It's, it's weird. weird. I know. Um, so apologies if this has already been asked, um, joined late. How do you plan your content in order to post consistently, so mainly around the topics you like? Sure. <laughs> So, yeah. so I, I've been very ad hoc in, in the past. So that, you know, I, I've, I've committed and I've never missed it that I'll, I'll post twice a day. And sometimes it gets to, you know, five minutes before the time. And I'm literally, oh, my goodness, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm Googling ideas around a topic that I've just decided upon. But if I'm 
um, if I'm honest, that's probably a bit stressful. The best way to do it is to sit down with a piece of paper, decide on your topic, and then, you know, you can do, let's say, for instance, I, I love the topic of life, right? Life and living it. I love the topic of listening. I love the topic of kindness. So take a, a quite a big topic like that, and then you've got such a myriad of approaches to that. So let's say kindness. You could do kindness in a text-based post. You could do kindness in a flip book. You could do kindness in a video. You all and, and that creates possibly three or four pieces of content from one thing because kindness, you can come at it from lots of different points of view, being kind to yourself, being kind to other people, being kind to people on LinkedIn, being kind to your work colleagues, all of those <laughs> things. That's five posts just there. Yeah, easy peasy. <laughs> And, and that was just off the top of your head. <laughs> but yeah. uh, what I would also bring into the equation is your personal brand. So think about what you want to, how you want to be viewed. Obviously, make it make it genuine and authentic. But pick say five words, and that that should get you on your way. Um, also, think about what your what your end goal is. Is it to get a job? Is it to get more followers? And think about it from that way. So if it's to get more followers, maybe like research what the um, the highest post, highest post, what am I thinking of? Uh, the highest amount of engagement in one post is. And that, that will give you an idea of what people will want to see. Um, and then just go from there. So if you think of five words that relate to you, start at that point and then research those words, etc. like Pete says. And you'll just you'll get loads of content. Also, if you want to send me a message, I do have a content kind of planner that you can pop things into, like your images, your links, um, and your content. So if you want to send me a message, I'll I'll get that across to you. As for as and for anyone else that wants the planner as well, just send me a message, and uh, I'll send you the content planner. Excellent. Don't forget, everybody, if you want to connect, just put in the comments, let's connect or happy to open to connect, anything like that. And we'll get you a good few new connections today and later in the uh, recording. Yeah. Um, so hang on, we've got a comment Thanks, here. Um, thank you. This is very informative. You're very welcome. Um, I never got any offer for any role before from LinkedIn. And this is strange. <laughs> I think inter international companies just use it to investigate about people, yes, um, to get more info about them by their post. What do you think about that? Well, so I did actually look into this last week, and uh, there was an absolutely incredible stat that something like 170 million users on LinkedIn last year got offered a position. So I would say that I would... If you're if people are looking at your profile and they're not contacting you, I would go and have a look at your profile and make sure it's um, in relation to the jobs that you're applying to, et cetera, because maybe you're meet, missing a bit of information. Yes, people will go onto your profile to analyze what you've been posting, et cetera, et cetera. But the words and your content uh, tells a story about you as well so if you're particularly down on one day and, and you're writing your profile it's going to come across that way so it's like your cv and, and everything else that goes with it what i would say to you is go outside do some star jumps go and skip or watch some really funny videos before you start writing your cv and your linkedin profile so that you put that kind of energy into it um, and it's a far better read yeah very good and, and to add to that, the featured section, you know, people have uh, you look at go to people's uh, profile and you can you look at it and you go, it, it says one thing in the title and then you go to their featured section and it's something about cats or something like that. And you're like, Does it, doesn't, doesn't make <laughs> sense. That The featured yeah. section is where you you sort of double down on what you're trying to achieve and, and really hammer it home so that they can see exactly what you want so they can potentially help you. Exactly. Um, actually, I did look at somebody last week. She, she she had a lot of cat videos, but they were nothing to do with the business. Yes, you can get engagement from some of these posts, but I don't think they're gonna they're not gonna help you to where you want to be. So always no. make sure it's in relation to what you're looking for. 
<laughs> yeah, and, and there is, there is, um, you know, if you look at LinkedIn, it's fascinating to see the the level of diversity of people's content, and yeah. yet, it, you know, it, nobody's right or wrong. You know, if 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 you post about one thing that you're interested in, as long as you're passionate and interested about it, there'll be loads of people on LinkedIn who are also passionate and interested about that. So. Don't be fearful that you, you know, th this is what I hear a lot is, you know, I don't know anything and I haven't got anything interesting to say. Well, that's just not true. You know, everybody has something to offer. And it's just it's just a question of sort of looking at yourself and looking at your skill set, your motivation and your passions and taking those things and thinking to myself, OK, what is it that I can offer that would be interesting to the people on LinkedIn, or at least some of them. You're never going to get everybody. No, <laughs> would love to, but no. Yeah. So we've got another question here from a LinkedIn user. Is it really necessary to use that many, oh, I can't, I'm not going to be able to say that word, <laughs> in posts? <Lentigons. laughs> well, I'm, um, a, I'm, I'm 53, right? You know, I'm 53 years old, right? And, and emoticons, I would never have considered using one of those in my entire life, but I'm telling you now, they attract the attention on LinkedIn. People are scrolling fast. They're, they're going through things. They're perhaps not spending as much time as you would like. And anything that catches the eye, like lots of wise space and emoticons can and do attract people like shiny things like, you know, <laughs> we'll magpies. make them stop and put in like magpies, like magpies. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it does. I mean, how many, how many is too many? I don't know. Let's not go mad, but, you know, I, I think definitely could use them. I mean, I think it's a good way to articulate what you mean about your post. I mean, sometimes you can't really take, you, you can't really understand the tone, etc. So if a couple of emojis, you're like, oh, okay, I get it now. Because <laughs> I think sometimes it can come across either, either way. But um, Pete, you brought up a good point there about the white space. When you're doing all of these posts, it's really hard. <laughs> it's a really hard work to read like paragraphs of information. And the same goes for a LinkedIn profile, really. Um, if there's reams and reams of inf information that you have to read through, it's hard work and you're going to lose that engagement. So putting in white space between each sentence, etc., makes it a little bit easier to digest. Yeah. And one particular area you, that I believe you should not use emojis in is in your profile, the place where is, it says for your name, your name should be your name. The minute you yeah. put, start putting your name with some emoticons in there, when people search for it, it won't be searchable properly. So you can put emoticons in the rest of it, but in the name bit, make it your absolute name because it is your passport to somebody finding you. So yeah. don't put them there, I would say. I did actually hear somebody say that that is against uh, LinkedIn's terms of business as well to put emojis in your name field. So oh. I, don't, I don't know how true, true that is. I'll, I'll probably have to look that up, but I don't really want to look through <laughs> LinkedIn's terms of business. I'm sure there are reams and reams of information as well. Yeah. So no. use, use them as you see fit, but it's a great question, LinkedIn user. Sorry, we can't name you. <laughs> got a few of them today i'm really not sure why that's happening maybe we're getting lots of uh, people out, outside of our network which is great um do you have any other tips i would say um let's go back to consistency and yeah. i would start by you know depending on it is hard to generate content sometimes so let's say at the very least let's say you decided you really wanted to have a go at linkedin and try and start, start growing your following so mm -hmm. i would put a calendar together and say, okay, to start with, I'm going to uh, post on LinkedIn. The, the best day on LinkedIn is Wednesday. So I would maybe do, let's do Wednesday and Thursday, do posts on Wednesday and Thursday, maybe midday UK time, start there, but then yeah. give yourself half an hour in the morning and half an hour in the evening to go through LinkedIn and do a, a certain amount of liking, a certain amount of engaging, and a certain amount of, um, you know, commenting. Mm. So I would do that. And also go back to everyone that comments on your posts 
<laughs> There's, there are some people out there who just kind of think it's like Facebook um, and they don't really engage with anyone. So if somebody's taken the time out to post a comment on your, your post, <laughs> Go back to them and start engage, engaging with them. Look at their posts, see what they've been doing. Um, and just, just don't leave them sat there. <laughs> Great. There's a, I'm really sorry, Dasgalascu. I'm sorry if I got that horribly wrong, but hello and thank you. <laughs> um, so writing articles. I used to write quite a few articles um, a few years ago that got engagement and uh, I don't think articles on LinkedIn get as much get engagement as they used to, unfortunately. Uh, there are far more people that go through the posts and the feed, um, just like everyone else. They don't go searching for the articles so much. So although I have them, I don't really write any more <laughs> articles anymore. I save them for the website. It's the transient nature of people scrolling. And, and the, every time, it's hard to get somebody to click the see more button Never mind, click the read an article and then go through a two minute article. But I would say it's it's great to mix it up. So what I think is the best thing to do is to do a mix of all the different formats in order that you can gain quick traction with with text post gets, you know, maybe do some photographs, do some posters, do a flip book and then mix in an article that's perhaps a little bit more serious because. Yeah. You don't what you don't want to be doing is is if your if your content or your subject matter or what you want to do is is a little bit businessy, then if you just go business 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 business, people will get bored. So yeah. mixing it up is good. So softer, then more businessy, and you get that mix, and people will get engaged more freely. I think. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much for the question. <laughs> Thank you for the question. So, any suggestions? Oh, we've got a job seeker on here. Any suggestions for job seekers overseas to find the right job such in, in such countries? So, this still relates back to growing on LinkedIn. Um, you know, you've got to get yourself out there and start engaging with the right companies and the right uh, decision makers. And like I, I like to say, it's like finding your cheerleaders. So, engaging more on LinkedIn and not just sending your CV out to like the recruiters or the LinkedIn jobs, you've got to mix it up. So if, have a list of companies, say 250 companies and target yourself and actually making 30 phone calls, 35 phone calls per week with the decision maker and you'll quickly um, see a turnaround and start to get interviews. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty similar to what we're saying growing on LinkedIn, a, a job search. It's, it, it does seem like it's a bit of a, uh, a long way to go about it and a bit unusual way, I guess, because most people would head to a job board or LinkedIn jobs, et cetera, Google jobs, uh, recruitment agencies, but there are lots of options out, out there, but you need to be out there. I, I, I get quite a lot of um, positive uh, response from uh, voice messages. So you can actually, in a direct message, you can you can record a, a voice comment on your phone. You can, I think, you can only do it on your phone. And what I've found is, I, I know this from personal experience because I receive, you know, maybe fifty direct messages a day, and a lot of them I don't really spend much time because some of them are quite long. If I receive a voice message, which I receive maybe one or two, I always listen to it. Yeah. So if you want a message, make your message concise, maybe 15, 20 seconds max, and maybe write a little script depending on what you're trying to achieve and send that to try and get what you want to get. But always, as Haley said earlier, be polite. Don't just say, give me a job. You know, mm -hmm. it, this is not acceptable protocol. You've got to be you've got to be doing it in the way you would do it in the normal world. Yeah, and it does come across as, I think someone's selling something now, uh, it does come across as really quite rude. If you're if you're asking a stranger to do something for you, they're not really, you know, there's no uh, reason for them to do it for you. You want to do things for people that you care about. Um, so by posting and engaging and being polite, et cetera, it's going to encourage those people to engage with you. I agree. Yeah. <clears throat> selling a tv now <laughs> i'll have it is it free 
<laughs> we'll have it if it's free. <laughs> Uh, Mahmoud, I, I see a bit, sort of comment there about spelling mistakes. Yeah, I could suggest that you can avoid spelling mistakes. I see a lot of those and I avoid posts with lots of them. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yep. there are some people that talk in like, I, I don't know what kind of text you call it, but you know when they say, if you was to say late, they put L8. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know what that, yeah. The the what I've no I don't know if this is a tip, but what I, I didn't realize that once you've posted your post, you can actually go to if you go to the post and you go to the th the three dots at the top of your post, you can edit the post if you see a spelling mistake later. Because I've done or somebody's come back to me and said, Did you mean to say which I didn't? So I've made a mistake. So I'll go back. You can actually change it after the fact, which yeah. is quite useful. But yeah, try and avoid spelling mistakes at all costs. <laughs> yeah. So does anyone have any more questions? Otherwise, it's probably a good time to kind of wrap it up for this week. Doesn't seem so. <laughs> okay, so Pete and I are gonna be doing this each week and you can keep posting comments um, and we will respond to them uh, during the day and the, the coming coming days. So, so keep them coming if you think of anything once we've kind of finished. Um, we'll still come back to you and keep saying in the in the in the comments if you want to connect connect now and you know everybody will connect with you and you'll get yourself a good number of new followers and connections which is all good Excellent and if you stuff. do have yeah I've, if you do have as Haley said if you do have other questions or things subjects you'd like us to cover we'll be here every week so we can cover those if you send us a message or put it in the comments Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Pete. And um, I look thanks. forward to catching up with you uh, next week. You too. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Take thanks care. For everyone. Questions, etc. See you next Bye. week. Bye. Bye.